This is Cyprus, an enchanting island located in the eastern Mediterranean, far from the rest of Europe, with Greece as its closest European Union neighbor. Intriguingly, Cyprus stands as the sole EU member state that finds its geographical roots in Asia. Yet despite its geographic position, Cyprus boasts a rich cultural history intertwined with European heritage, spanning over two millennia. This fusion of influences has shaped Cyprus's politics and culture, aligning it closely with Europe. The island's geopolitical importance is undeniable. At the intersection of three continents, it has been desired by many empires over history. Even to this day, 36.2% of its northern region is under Turkish military occupation. Nonetheless, Cyprus joined the EU in 2004 and is the third smallest EU member state with just over 1.2 million people. So how did Cyprus join the EU to start with? And what is their relationship with the EU like? This is the fourth video in a series where we break the union into 27 pieces and dissect each of the member states one by one. So make sure you subscribe to see them all. Cyprus has long been under the influence of powerful empires. From 1571 to 1878, the island was a prized possession of the Ottoman Empire. Yet its ancient Hellenic heritage persisted, resulting in a significant Greek Cypriot population. As World War I concluded in 1918, the geopolitical landscape transformed. The island's strategic Mediterranean position attracted British interest, and by 1925, Cyprus was officially declared a crown colony. This British dominion, combined with the historic Ottoman influences and a sizable Greek Cypriot population, made Cyprus a melting pot of cultures, identities, and political interests. The Greek Cypriots, constituting a majority of the populace, dreamt of Enosis, or in other words, the unification with Greece. The British, on the other hand, valued Cyprus as a vital geopolitical asset, particularly after its strategic importance during the Second World War and the subsequent Suez Crisis in 1956. Meanwhile, Turkey was cautious about having an island heavily influenced by Greek culture and politics so close to its coast. In 1955, the Greek Cypriots launched a fervent national liberation movement. Their aspiration wasn't just for unification with Greece, but primarily independence from British rule. The movement culminated in the Zurich-London Agreements of 1959, endorsed by Britain, Greece and Turkey, as well as representatives from the Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot communities. This landmark agreement paved the way for the creation of the Republic of Cyprus as an independent state in 1960. It established a power-sharing arrangement, where the president would be a Greek Cypriot and the vice president a Turkish Cypriot, symbolizing the governance contribution of both major communities. However, the newfound harmony was fragile. In November 1963, the president of Cyprus proposed constitutional amendments to improve the state's functionality. But these were rejected by Turkey and the Turkish Cypriot leadership. As a result, Turkish Cypriot officials withdrew from the Cypriot government, leading to intercommunal clashes and the threat of Turkish intervention. In response, Cyprus sought the UN Security Council's help. The council confirmed Cyprus's sovereignty and legality and sent peacemakers to restore order and facilitate a peaceful settlement process. A decade later, in 1974, Tensions escalated with an attempted coup against a democratically elected government by the Cypriot National Guard, sponsored by the Greek military junta, in an effort to unite with Greece. Turkey swiftly responded with a military intervention and cited the protection of the Turkish minority as the reason for its intervention, though some international observers argued that there were additional geopolitical motivations. This chain of events led to the island's partition, the north became a region under Turkish administration, separated by the Green Line, while the Republic of Cyprus, also called ROC, continued to claim sovereignty over the entire island. However, the ROC administration only has effective control over the southern region. Turkey is the only country that officially recognizes the independent self-declared Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. But the ROC is widely recognized internationally as representing the entire island. As years passed, the administration of the Republic of Cyprus took significant strides in their European aspirations. But its path to EU membership was challenging, especially with a self-declared republic in the north, recognized only by Turkey, and the presence of Turkish troops. But despite the island's division, 
The EU admitted Cyprus in 2004, based on its stable institutions, adherence to democracy, rule of law, human rights, a functioning market economy, and the hope that EU membership might facilitate a resolution to the conflict, although this aspiration remains unfilled. While the entire island is part of the EU, the North's unresolved status leads to the suspension of EU laws there, under the Green Line Regulation. In 2008, Cyprus also adopted the Euro, but its divided status has delayed full Schengen Area membership, with discussions ongoing. Interestingly, Cyprus is also a Commonwealth member, and hosts two British military bases. These bases, held by the UK under the 1960 Independence Treaty, are viewed by some as colonial relics and are outside of the EU. Regarding Cyprus's economy, its GDP at 27.8 billion euros in 2022 is modest compared to many of its EU counterparts. With a nominal GDP per capita of 30,000 euros, it ranks 13th in Europe, ahead of Spain and Slovenia, but trailing Italy and Malta. Notably, with the EU average GDP per capita at €35,000, Cyprus is slightly off the European average. Intra-EU trade accounts for 34% of Cyprus's exports, which is significantly lower than other EU countries. In the EU, the main recipients are Greece and the Netherlands, and outside of the EU, the UK and Liberia. In terms of imports, 59% come from EU member states. Greece once again leads, followed by Italy. From non-EU nations, 8% comes from the UK and 6% from China. In terms of the EU budget, in 2020, Cyprus contributed 245 million to the EU coffers, roughly 1.2% of its economy. During that same year, the EU directed its investments into various areas, including smart and inclusive growth, economic and social development, sustainable growth and resource management, and security and citizenship. Cyprus, therefore, was a net beneficiary of 187 million euros. One such project is the Nicosia Wastewater Treatment Plant expansion, which aims to enhance wastewater treatment infrastructure in the capital city Nicosia, aligning with sustainability goals. Cyprus operates a presidential republic, where the president, serving five-year terms, is both the head of state and government. The president and his council of ministers handles the executive functions and day-to-day -day decisions, while the House of Representatives, with 80 members, is responsible for making and passing laws. Today, 56 seats are held by directly elected Greek Cypriots, and 24 are reserved for Turkish Cypriots, though they've largely withdrawn due to historic tensions. The current president is backed by the center-right Democratic Party, the Centrist Democratic Alignment Party, and the center-left movement of Social Democrats. The other parties in the parliament are the right-wing Democratic Rally, the left-leaning Progressive Party of Working People, the ultra-nationalist National Popular Front, and the Green Movement of Ecologists. As for the ROC government priorities, as outlined by the president, are resolving the Cyprus problem with a TRNC, effectively managing the migration issue given that Cyprus has the highest refugee per capita rate in the EU, enhancing Cyprus's participation in shaping EU policies, boosting economic competitiveness, and reducing the everyday cost of living. With that being said, how is Cyprus represented on the EU level? Cyprus has six MEPs who represent the country's interests at the international level in the European Parliament. Among the 27 EU member states, Cyprus along with Luxembourg and Malta has one of the smallest number of MEPs. However, this is due to its small population. In terms of per capita representation, Cyprus is actually one of the countries best represented in the EU, given its relatively small population compared to other member states. Two Cypriot MEPs are part of the EPP group, two MEPs are part of the left group, and two MEPs are part of the SD group. But it doesn't stop there. Cyprus's representation extends to the European Commission, the EU's executive level. Stella Kyriakides serves as the European Commissioner for Health and Food Safety. In her capacity, she's responsible for providing independent scientific advice for EU legislation and policies in all fields that have an impact on food and food safety, as well as for matters of public health, animal health, and plant health. So what is Cyprus's relationship with the EU like? Well, overall, Cypriots seem mostly content with EU membership, with 52% viewing it positively, 35% being neutral, and only 13% seeing it negatively. 
There are issues, however, starting with Russia. Cyprus has a long-standing connection with Russia, including financial ties and controversies, like the Cyprus Investment Program, which saw wealthy foreigners, primarily Russians, buying EU citizenship. The country also faced a serious banking crisis in 2012, partly tied to Russian capital hidden offshore in Cyprus, where the EU had to intervene. These issues, among others, complicate Cyprus's relationship with the EU and raise concerns about its associations with Russia, especially with the invasion of Ukraine. Another significant issue in Cyprus is the enduring division between the northern and southern parts of the island, with no immediate solution in sight. The long history of conflicts and disputes between communities has made reunification difficult. In hindsight, some have argued that it might have been wiser to halt Cyprus's accession to the EU at a certain point and insist that only a united island could gain membership. This decision, they suggest, could have served as a stronger incentive for both sides to work towards a peaceful resolution of their differences, as the European Union's influence and benefits could have been a potent motivator for reunification. On the other hand, some Cypriots are frustrated and disappointed with what they perceive as the EU's limited involvement or effectiveness in helping to reunify the island. They believe that the EU could do more to encourage and facilitate a resolution to the long-standing division. But what do you think of Cyprus's place in the EU? We'd love to hear from our Cypriot viewers, so please leave a comment letting us know your thoughts. And a big thank you to Stelios, who volunteered to contribute to the video. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you want to support the channel further, please sign up to Patreon. Until next time.